And welcome back once again to TIA 2014, day two of our three-day conference on the network of the future again in Dallas, Texas. With us in the Dell TI Now studio is Tim Harden. He's the president of supply chain and fleet operations at AT&T. And Tim, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here again. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I know you just came off a keynote. Is that I right? I did, yes. And for our viewers that didn't have the pleasure of listening to that keynote and they're not here, can you give us a quick summary? Uh, we were really exploring uh, what's going to happen in the next few years and uh, you know, with that, what are some of the challenges that uh, carriers are, are uh, running into, uh, specifically around the transition between technologies, uh, some of the people issues associated with that, and really how do you preserve quality going forward when you look at yeah, the traditional networks today where we've built the quality of the network to five nines reliability, how do you maintain that? as you go through this transition in technologies. Let's talk a little further, Tim, about the changes in the coming years for AT&T. Let's talk specifically about network and IT infrastructure. Yeah. What changes can we see coming forward? Yeah, you know, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a picture a little farther out and then uh, a little bit of what to, to expect in the next few years. So we've really kind of drawn a circle around the architectures of software-defined networks, network function virtualization, and open environments using APIs to really drive innovation and uh, really reduce dramatically not only the cost of running the networks, but the ability of the end user to really control the experience. In fact, we've actually named this transition the user-defined network cloud. Um, it's really our supplier domain 2.0 uh, program. It's the next generation of a supply chain, and it's focused on the 2020 timeline. Why 2020? Uh, because uh, when we looked at kind of where the industry was with these technologies and architectures, they were playing around pretty much with them. They really hadn't deployed them fully. And if you look at the growth in traffic, the growth in traffic is such where the next five years is absolutely critical to change the equation of how you build the architectures, how you move them forward, and uh, allow yourself uh, a um, new approach with, at a lower cost point to be able to handle the high volume of traffic. So 2020 really is the timeline. Um, at and is a bit unique in that timeline in that uh, we drew a circle around and said we'll be there in five years and then we did an operating plan at the ground level that was a six-year operating plan to really reinforce the fact that we were moving in that direction. And we've worked very closely with all the suppliers to make that transition as well. Um, so you'll see some movement towards that in 14, 15 it accelerates significantly, then 16, 17, 18 and beyond, really just uh, as fast as you can put these new technologies in place. So that's a, a little of a view, uh, maybe different between carriers, but in essence, uh, you know, I think uh, in the next 10 years you'll see the bulk of the industry having moved here. You mentioned AT&T's Domain 2.0. Of course, that's going to be featured tomorrow at your supplier, AT&T yes, Supplier Conference. Correct. Uh, right here at the Hyatt Regency. That's event, correct. Right? Uh, what are some of the uh, requirements to adapt to Domain 2.0? So, first of all, it's uh, less hardware-oriented, more software-oriented. It actually extracts the software off of the hardware. The model that's been in place for the last 25 to 30 years is a proprietary hardware box, proprietary ASICs, the software built onto those, and pretty much a closed environment with the vendor and the service provider. Going forward, the separation of that hardware and software begins to transition the public network, real-time network, more to what we've seen in IT over the last uh, few years. Uh, many of the IT organizations around the world have moved to cloud and virtualized environments. Um, and that's exactly where the network is going in this five-year time frame. It's virtualizing the network and taking it to the point where, in fact, you're doing more in software uh, and writing common off-the-shelf uh, uh, servers to uh, really uh, be able to move things around. The, 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 the infrastructure investment probably doesn't change a lot. You're still going to invest capital-wise, in our case, $21 billion may come down slightly, but the buckets at which you're expending those dollars in start to shift around uh, more towards software, less towards hardware. Now you mentioned uh, investment in network infrastructure. What can the government do to incentivize more investment? Uh, they can certainly give us a break for every dollar we invest. We'd love to see that. 
And quite frankly, uh, if you kind of look at uh, not only what at and has done, but others in the industry, in our case, uh, we've invested over the last five years, you know, over $120 billion into the U.S. economy. And, um, you know, with that, you know, we certainly would like to see the government acknowledge through some more incentives in the investments that are being made, those things which we're doing. I think, uh, you know, the agenda there in terms of the types of things we would like to see uh, is long, and uh, certainly our Washington office is well engaged in that. I'm not the expert in that area, but I can tell you that, you know, uh, we're creating a lot of jobs. Uh, we're creating uh, certainly uh, an economic environment uh, that uh, is going to sustain itself for some time to come. And uh, the more that the government can do to actually incent co companies like ours to invest, the better. Tim, I'd like to uh, finish this discussion by shifting gears uh, just for a moment. Sure. I want to ask, why is supplier diversity so important to at and and so important to you? Yeah. Um, it's the way we choose to do business. I mean, uh, just uh, if you kind of step back and say, you know, what, what's, what do we get out of this? One, we get to invest in companies that are uh, in the communities that we're providing services in. Uh, we've seen some incredible stories of diverse suppliers who have great solutions, just haven't had an opportunity to, to get those to the, a direct relationship that have now grown into multi-billion dollar businesses. Um, you know, for us, uh, we, we put a uh, stake in the ground in 2008, at which point we were doing about 9% of every dollar we spent with diverse suppliers and about $5 billion, mostly all in the network. Put a stake in the ground and said we'd be 21.5% and that, um, you know, that would come across the entire spend of AT&T. In 2013, uh, we were at 28 percent and 15.5 billion dollars. So in the space of a very short period of time, we've been able to dramatically increase the amount of participation. And with that, we've seen some tremendous companies. Now, what I would say is they also have the challenge. It's not just the diverse suppliers, but all of the supply chain has a challenge in front of them to also make this transition into next generation networks. And so we're spending a lot of time with those uh, CEOs of those companies to, to make sure they understand kind of what's ahead of them. And that's a bit of what we're doing uh, tomorrow with uh, bringing the CEOs into a session here at TIA to give them a picture not only of where we think uh, the network is going, but also bringing in the head of uh, our IT uh, organization to give them that same picture of IT and uh, a bit of where the network uh, organizations are going. What we hope to accomplish by that is that when we make a hard pivot to these new technologies, we have the diverse suppliers sitting right there ready to, to provide us a, a next generation of supply. Where we don't have those in place, my team needs to go find them. And uh, so we've been out looking for you know, new companies, new startups that are really in these new areas so that in fact we have options that we can provide back to our internal uh, clients as to companies that can meet the, both their demands for cost and performance, but also meet our overall corporate goals of supplier diversity. Tim, I know the invited attendees for tomorrow's supplier conference that features Domain 2.0. I know they're excited to hear more about that and find out how they can uh, be involved and adapt to uh, Domain 2.0. So yes, yeah, we're looking forward to it as well. It's also it's a it's a great exchange. Uh, and you can imagine uh, the supply base is very passionate about what they do. They've done a tremendous job for many years. Um, we actually want all of these same suppliers to be able to make that transition with us. So you have to invest a little bit of time and you have to invest a little bit of, of uh, your uh, vision of where things are going in order for them to make the investments that get uh, them positioned for your changes. And that's what tomorrow is all about. Tim, uh, as always, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Good Appreciate to see you again. It. You too. And thanks again for joining us on our coverage of TIA's Network of the Future Conference. The Dell TI Now Studio, as always, will be streaming live throughout the conference. You can view our live stream and all of our programming at tinow.org. So long.